Hi folks, we're back with Dr. Jan Prenz, a world leading research scientist in swimming biomechanics and technique analysis. We're here to understand more about the butterfly today to help you get the most out of this stroke, maximizing your speed and, and swimming faster. Today, we'll be sharing some of our FM visuals along with Dr. Prenz's high speed motion analysis to highlight the areas that impact your performance. So let's dive right in. Jan, thank you so much for joining us. Always a pleasure, John. Good morning. In your video series, you penetrate this topic even more if I'm right when you do your butterfly. Is that correct? Yeah, we use the same types of filming techniques, filming from the front side and the bottom synchronized so we can see the progress within each stroke cycle. Okay, great. So we'll be talking about that at the end and how you can get a hold of that and get access to Jan's video series, which is absolutely amazing at the end of the show. So let's go ahead and I'm going to share my screen and we're going to go right in here. So today we're working, as I mentioned, on butterfly. Um, I'm going to show some stills here um, and you can kind of see it from the side. And right here we have what's called our stroke map. Now on this, we're on what we call a 200 level breakdown. We have 100, 200, and 300 level. Right now we're looking at a 200 level breakdown. And you can see A stands for arms, H for head, T for the torso, and L for legs. And mm -hmm. when we look at A, that's A zero when the hands are out of the water, which is kind of the uh, one of the big notables. When you look at butterfly, you see those arms coming out of the water and, and it looks very elegant usually. Um, sometimes not so much, but then you have the A1, and that's the below surface recovery, um, A2, the gather, A3, the press, and A4, the thrust. Um, and so we'll be really focusing heavily on that. And then you'll also see a lot about the kick today. So we have what's called L1, that's the below surface recovery, L2, the gather, and L3, that's where those, right? So L2 is where the, the knees bend, and L3, where you have that down, down sweep of the legs and that we call the press. Um, now let's go ahead to see the 300 level uh, breakdown and how much it differs. And you can see all the little pieces that are broken out in what we call the components. So this one up here, are the, this is the phases, the 200. And on the 300 level, we're in the component levels. You can see much more breakdown in there. And you can even look inside the components and see all the elements in there, like angle, bend, speed, location, right, intensity, things like that. And so today, we're going to be going in and, and looking at that stroke and kind of digging in. And then we're going to come out and look at the different dimensions and how they work with that. So right now, we're going to go right into here. Again, A0, when you're out of the water, A1 below surface recovery, A2 is the gather, A3 the press, and A4 the thrust. And now we're going to go over and we're going to take a look at this. Great. So I am going to start from the beginning here of the clip. Again, as we can do with the software, we can combine all three perspectives of the cameras. For those folks that haven't joined us before, we're just going to describe real quick that the chart on the bottom is measuring velocity. Is that right, Jan? Correct. That's that's the active graph. Okay. The graph measures velocity over time. You see time on the x-axis, and this is the change in the hip velocity, how fast the hip is traveling. So that has a, you've got a little light on the hip there that's strapped, right? They've got a strap around there, right? right? Like a, and then like a belt. And then they have this little white light you can see on okay. there. Yes, that's an LED. Got it's it. got its own battery pack. And you have this very high speed camera that's taking a hundred frames per second. And All the average is 30. All three cameras are we're filming at 100 frames a second, which is three times faster than the uh, than the normal video. Video, regular video is 30 frames a second. Okay, and what we're measuring, folks, here is the velocity of the hip, which is measured by that white light, and that's how fast it's moving and in what direction it's moving. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Across what we call the longitudinal plane of motion. That's what we want to see progress because. That's the bottom line. We want to see swimmers progress in the longitudinal plane. And so if you think of this as a car going by you folks, 
you can think this is how fast the car is going and whether it's going to the right or left. In this case, it's moving to the right. And over on, uh, on the right, upper right, you have a red bar. What does that do? Okay, that bar, and we, we made it a little bit larger to accentuate the changes in that velocity. All it's doing is, is, is a, a moving histogram showing when the velocities go high and low. So it's easy to visualize. You see how it moves down? It's way down at the bottom. So that's measuring right here where the measuring line is, the velocity, how slow yeah. the swimmer or fast the swimmer is moving forward, how fast the car is going as well, right? Exactly. It's, a, it's more of a visual. You can always get numbers, but the numbers in more detail are right here. You see it says current curve value. So if people want to look at numbers, those are the numbers they can get to three decimal places. But this histogram is nice to look at because you can see how the speeds are fluctuating. Right. And now right here, when we look okay. at that, the idea is to keep that red bar as high as possible. Is that correct? Yeah, that's going to, only going to happen during certain phases, as we well know. So folks, when we're looking at technique and we're, trying, we're doing an analysis on the technique, we're looking to see how fast that body's moving. What did the arms do? What did the legs do to cause that? What did the head do, right? To cause that to happen. And that's what we're looking for. When that red bar goes down, right? How do we keep it up or get it higher when we can? Exactly. Okay, here we go. So remember, and this is just one swimmer. He's not, you know, he's a division one swimmer, so they're pretty good, but every swimmer has their own idiosyncrasies, as we well know. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm going to keep hand scrubbing. So here is the slowest part when the hands are recovering. You see the hands have disappeared. They're in That's the air. That's A zero, right? That's it. Hands are out of the water. They're in the air, and the knees are bending on the upbeat, so you see the drop in velocity right here. So when the legs go up, in this case, his knees are bent, and that's causing resistance. Is that right? Right. It's, and actually, it's generating lift in the opposite direction. It's like kicking freestyle kick, bending the knees on the upbeat. If you do that, you'll go backwards, as you know. Right. And if you do that with both legs, you'll go backwards as well. So when you're doing the flutter kick, it's very important that we keep the knees straight on the upbeat and bend on the downbeat. That's what the kick is. If you bend on the upbeat, you're generating propulsive force in the reverse direction. Right. All right, so let's progress here now. Here's the hands are going in. That's the downbeat on that first kick right there. That's why we see the little rise. Right, so that and, first kick is causing propulsion now, and then you're moving forward. Right? right, and then nothing's going on here. And you see there's no dip because from here, the swimmer is lifting his legs up with his knees straight. See that? And so there's no dramatic drop in velocity. And it's kind of maintaining come, there a little bit, right? The speed. Exactly. And then starts the catch. Here is the middle of the stroke right here. And there's the press, as you call it, right there. And it's very clear. You can see what's going on. That's massive propulsion there. And you're getting, if, if we're looking at this right, the arms now are in A4. Sure. And the legs are in L3, what we call L3. Exactly. So L3 is causing propulsion. A4 is causing massive propulsion, and they're both working together to get this huge peak, right, and drive the body forward. Exactly. Once now you do have, that, you're going to have that, right, it's going to slow down again. Exactly. This is the next stroke. The arms are recovering, and as we recover, the arms are doing nothing, but the key point here that we see this dip is because he's bending his knees on the upbeat. Mm -hmm. See that? So we're doing what we just talked about. We want to avoid, it's never going to go away completely, but swimmers have to be very careful not to get their knees bending too much on the upbeat because you can see the dip here. Right, right. And that really reduces There's that. the downbeat again with the kick. You see, you're generating force with that kick. And this is more, more like the breaststroke in the sporadic, right? It's more sporadic, like breaststroke is, although breaststroke is even more. Um, right. then there's like a freestyle or backstroke, right? Sure, there's, there's peaks and valleys on the graph because that's what the velocity does. The velocity varies. And a good flyer will minimize these dips. Now, one of the things I need to mention is that 
we think this kick, when the, when the swimmer is coming up to take a breath, is a little bit too deep right there. Mm -hmm. See that? But I don't think there's any way. If the swimmer is really working on their downbeat, it's going to look like that. So, right. If they have you know, a long striking line, right, that's going to give them the propulsion. So the right. trait is propulsion versus resistance here. Exactly. But what this swimmer can work on a little bit more is trying to avoid too much bending the knees on the upbeat. That is absolutely fascinating. Wow. And so without this high speed camera, you wouldn't be able, right? It would be almost like too far each time to measure it properly. Yeah, they're moving too fast. There's no way to see what's going on. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Uh, that's uh, absolutely incredible. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll go from here and I'm going to share my screen to kind of relate what we saw there. So we saw here in, in the a4 that had massive propulsion and we had the second kicks l3 going at the same time when those yeah. two came together massive push forward is that that's correct when see, yeah. that's when you see the maximum peak velocities we're going to go look at our animations here and we found some things that are really interesting actually uh, dr prinz is um brought a, a lot of attention to this a lot of information it's really great so for you if you want to get access to these animations for yourself or if you have if you're a coach and you have a team you just go to fluidmechanics.net click in our fast track if you don't have it yet you just click on the demo um, if you already and, and you can uh, get access to the uh, fast track in there over here we're going to go in my fast track because we already have the account and we're going to go over to animations or presentations first and animations. When we click on there, we've got all these animations in here. I'm going to choose butterfly. And as I do, I can watch the motion pattern. Now, this way you can teach your swimmers, right? Or teach yourself if it's you by yourself and basically how that that pattern and how the motion pattern is. Now, we're going to go out of the motion pattern. There's all these different angles that you can watch on so i can also watch over here and i can see them coming straight on towards me right so i can watch different aspects of it i can go down below and see it from underneath above things like this now the next step is i can go from that to structure and what the structure does is it gives us the pathway we saw a0 a1 a2 a3 a4 right and so right here the swimmer's in a0 what we noticed during that portion, what Dr. Prince was saying is that these legs need to stay straight, if I'm right, during this process. Yeah, I'll be correct, right there. Right, and then, right, you can see a little bit of a bend there, but we didn't want a lot of bend there. And then exactly. we went a little deeper than more because we're trying to do some work with leverage here. And then back here, that's your massive propulsion right here. Correct. This is where everything happens. Now let's see, again, you can watch this from different angles, like straight on to try to watch it. And you can see we've only done one, one side so it doesn't get confusing. But now what we wanna do is we wanna go over and I wanna see the hydrodynamics. And that's how the water works with it. And now we'll see why there's so much propulsion there. Right, that's a massive right there. Yes, that's, and that's exactly where we saw the peak velocities. Got it. And the kick is doing, they don't have the hydrodynamic picture in there with the kick, but the kick's doing the same thing there. And so if we look at it from underneath, just kind of an interesting view. And from here, the next question is, not only can we see the hydrodynamics, but let's see the force. Here, we're going to look at the side view. You can see that A0 is green, which is set up. It's getting prepared. A1 is green as well. A2, getting ready, still getting ready here. Now we're going to start propulsion. A3 and A4. Now you can see right here, this is massive propulsion right back here. Good. So this is where you're getting a lot of speed. What, we're, what uh, Dr. Prince was pointing out is if you're in other phases, such as if you're in this phase, if you bend your knees, what was happening there, Jan? Bending the knees on the upbeat. And now, in this case, it's well done because it doesn't show the knees bending. And if you bend your knees on the upbeat, of course, as we know, we'll generate 
propulsion in the opposite direction. Right. And the only way this guy is bending his knees is when he goes into that downbeat. Right. And so yeah, that's why we built it that way, because your knowledge was so important in, in understanding this aspect that we didn't want to just bend just real quick. I can show you if if this went up like this. Right. If, if you bent your knees on the upbeat, just like we showed in the video, you the will foot. generate lift. It's just like kicking flutter kick. If you want to have backward swimming races, which we used to have, <laughs> right? Exactly. You hold the kickboard and go backwards. What do you do? You bend your knees on the upbeat. Right. So you have all this resistance right in there, right uh, in the that area. Yeah, the resistance is certainly there, but you're also generating lift in the opposite direction. Gotcha. So it's really a, a big problem if you do that. Got it. Yeah. So from here, so you can kind of tell a little bit about how that works and you move forward here. Again, we, we put this a little steeper for our uses because we're trying to get a little bit more leverage there as we're experimenting with that. And then over here, massive propulsion. Now, one of the things that you had said, Jan, is from underneath, you're seeing some, some really interesting things. Let me go back over here to structure. What are you seeing that's going on nowadays? Well, we now know that there's much less emphasis on the keyhole pull. We're not talking about the keyhole pull anymore. Mm -hmm. And that is a trend, freestyle, backstroke, and butterfly. The trend is more to propulsive drag forces being more linear, more in a straight line. If you do it in a perfect straight line, then you're going to lose traction. Okay. But butterfly is definitely more backwards rather than- Not as much of much. this. Exactly. And right, so this is why they used to call the old keyhole, looks like a lot like an old skeleton key and okay. a little bit more like trimmed, is that right? Exactly. The right. movement is more backwards early. Okay, you great. To start initiating the backward movement of the hands early as long as you don't have that water traveling and you just keep following the same exact same pattern. You got to feel the pressure of the water new water as you do that, which is what good swimmers would do, but it's mostly pushing back rather than going out first. Out and in too much, got it. So that's really helpful to know for everyone um, that they're starting to get more straight back. It's not perfectly straight back, but more straight back than exactly. it was before they were going way out yeah. and in like that. John, can I add something? Can you Please. go to where we just look at the hands, the positioning of the hands? Uh, from the side, because I think you do something very, very important. And that is that you show that the palms are facing backwards all the way through. Oh, so go, you see, can you see how the palms are facing backwards? This is, and what happens is a lot of flies because of their forearms are weak, they let go with their wrists and their hands slip. But your animation is very good because it shows, it emphasizes the fact that the palms are constantly pushing back. Jan, here's the hydrodynamics to show everybody exactly why we're doing that. Right. See, if you, and we have examples of the velocity dropping off mid-stroke because the person let go with their wrists. Right, so and so all of a sudden they start slipping, right? Slipping and also, the other way, letting go with their wrist like this. Okay, like that. Got it. So they're yes, up on top of the pressure. Exactly. And that's a very common defect. Got it. So right here, and this is so important. So back over here, let's move back. This is right here where you're starting to grasp that water, which is why that section in force is green setup. And now we're going to start to push on the pressure field. And then we're going to start to thrust ourselves off of that pressure field and Good. drive ourselves down that pool basically throwing yourself down the pool there. Such great information. I love with the science, it really makes sense when you pour that science in, not just a basic understanding of this really helps. Okay, so folks, the next step from here is if you want to know more information from Dr. Prenz, you go to experts in the fast track, scroll down here. We've got amazing experts in it. Here's Dr. Prenz over here, hit the offer. And here's more information. You can watch the clips and you can get access to his, some of his articles. And right here, you can purchase his 16 video program. And that's phenomenal. It's all on the freestyle biomechanics. Is that right, Jan? 
Correct. Right. We will right now the first one we focused on three star. Now we're trying to put a manual together, a book that will also include the other strokes, and we'll have still pictures of what we just showed you with the butterfly back and breaststroke. So those will be. It won't be a video program, but it will be in the form of a, a book, which we will, the emphasis is going to be on freestyle, but we're also going to add the other strokes. Oh, that's absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us. This is fabulous. I think everybody loves seeing the science behind it. And uh, the, my coach and, and uh, you're, you were the, the uh, head assistant coach, Doc Councilman. So we had a lot in common on there and we, we learned a lot from him. And I think uh, he'd be so excited to see this put together this way. It would be. It would be. Thank okay. you, John. Pleasure. Thanks so much again.